I would have met Gord Downey, I think at the end of my first year or second year of university. And uh, it's funny because I, I just saw Tom Wilson was just here a couple of weeks ago and he, uh, he did a reading from his book and it was all about the tragically hip. And this was so awesome to me to hear what he was talking about. Cause he was just describing what I, you know, say just absolutely nailing what they were doing, that they were really enthusiastic that he had them play a set. He said they, they played all these like obscure mid sixties stones albums. They played off the hook who plays off the hook. I'm like, yes, I like I I'm a big fan of the 1965 Rolling Stones like albums like now and out of our head because Gord lent them to me and I taped them and uh, I I think like if, if if it hadn't been for the the second guitar player Paul if he hadn't been one of their buddies I probably could have joined the Tragically Hip. It's it's not outside the realm of possibility. I, I I remember jamming with them once after a gig and, and first time I ever played it like a real guitar. And uh, yeah, those and those early shows were amazing. Um, like I said, they didn't they didn't do any hits. They they just did transformed. They, they used to do this Yardbird song called Here It Is. And I remember just thinking like things were exploding. And later I listened to the, to the version, the Yardbirds version. I'm like, that's not what I heard. <laughs> like they, they just seemed to transform everything. And Gord was, you know, pretty riveting right, right from the start. The, the first show I ever saw was my parents brought me to see the tragically hip with um, Cheryl Crow and Ashley McIsaac. So this was, I think it was another roadside attraction. I was so young that all I, I remember just asking for pizza. Like that's all I wanted at this concert. I, I didn't know what was going on, but so maybe that's what kickstarted my lifelong love of music was having just by osmosis, having the, the hip yep. being in that yep. presence. Did, did you end up uh, staying in touch with the, the members of the hip over the years as Treble Charger blew up and, and the hip maintained that success? Yeah, but mo mostly Gord. Um, yeah, in the, the early 90s, I hung out with Gord a, a, a fair amount. He had, I was, we were both living pretty close by in the West End of Toronto. He had this place on College Street uh, with his wife. They had no, no kids then. I used to hang out there a lot. Um, uh, Josh Finlayson from uh, Sky Diggers was there a lot. Yeah, it was, it was good. Gord's, you know, Gord is, is an awesome guy. And, and, you know, I remember thinking that the last time I talked to him, I remember thinking that my, our conversations together were, were like a, like a chess match only in, in a, in a fun, non, non-stressful way. We were just, both trying to kind of outwordsmith each other. We, has, we, has it um, has it meant a lot to you to see the outpouring of of, of love and and support? Uh, you know when he when he passes away, that you know all of Canada and and the world just showed so much love and and just embraced him and and yeah, it, it was like a celebration of his life as much as you could, you know. Yeah, and it, it, Gord Gord was a very special guy. He was just the ultimate sweetheart. I always describe him to people as as saying that if 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 you had a chance to have a ten minute talk with Gord, you would that ten minutes would be you talking about yourself because that's the kind of guy Gord was. He would ask you about, he would find common ground and, and, and he would talk about you, not him.